Hi, AP Bio. Let's recap Investigation 1, the Artificial Selection Lab. For this lab, we were taking a look at natural selection as a mechanism of evolution. We were going to apply mathematical methods to data from this real population and to investigate how natural selection acts on phenotypic variations in a population. Our main question was to see, can extreme selection change expression of a quantitative trait in a population in one generation? And so the organism we used was the Wisconsin fast plants. We were able to grow these little seeds, have the seedlings grow up. Um, we were looking at the uh, stems between the cotyledons, the seed leaves, and the first true leaves. Uh, we separated them into two populations so that the hairy plants uh, were in a population together and the not so hairy were together. And we cross pollinated the hairy plants with each other and the non hairies with each other. So we used Q tips to um, pretend we were little bees and uh, dab dab on the flowers to cross pollinate between these plants. These trichomes, as you can remember, uh, are these little tiny hairs that were difficult to see, uh, but nonetheless, they are a phenotype that we can easily uh, take a look at on a plant. So these trichomes are the appendages. Uh, they help plants in a variety of ways, um, one of which is if there's a lot of these trichomes on the stems, it helps plants that have little insects or things, uh, herbivores crawling up, with, uh, up the stems to interfere with their feeding. So um, th these were the procedures, as you can remember. Uh, we grew the first generation, separated the two uh, phenotypes, the really hairy plants versus the not so hairy plants, uh, allowed them to cross pollinate within their subgroups. And then we collected the seeds and let them dry. So we were hoping to be able to plant them um, probably around this time and to collect data on generation two. Here's the generation one class data. We recorded for every single plant how many trichomes were on it. Overall, in the class, there were 183 plants that sprouted, and so the top 10% of those 183 plants is about 18 plants. So taking a look at the top uh, 18 hairiest plants, it turns out um, the top 10% had 18 trichomes or more, and the bottom 90% had 17 trichomes or less. I went ahead and calculated the mean, um, and that was 6.48 trichomes on average per plant. Um, the standard deviation was 10.39, and the standard error of the means was 0.77. Um, over on the right side was the uh, spreadsheet where we were gonna record our generation two class data, but we didn't get a chance to plant those this year. So what do we do with the generation one data? Well, we take the raw data and we're not gonna plot every single little point. Instead, we're gonna create a histogram. A histogram is an approximate representation of the distribution of numerical or categorical data. We don't plot every single point, but instead uh, we group the numbers into ranges. So you can see on the x-axis on this sample histogram here, we don't have every, every single number lined out, but we uh, have these groups which are called bins. So 30 to 35 is one bin, 35 to 40 is another bin. And so we're grouping the data together to create our representation for this population. So here's the histogram for our actual generation one data. And you can see that most of the plants in terms of number of trichomes on the x-axis and uh, number of plants on the y-axis, this, this graph skews heavily towards the left. So the majority of plants had zero to about five trichomes. So when we did artificial selection with this first generation, what we did was we took the top 10%, so 18 trichomes or more, basically the right half of this graph, uh, we collected them together and cross-pollinated those really hairy plants together. Now, uh, let's compare with uh, last year's class generation one data 
Uh, this group had a few more plants, 398 plants, and I created a graph down here, as you can see. Now, I want you to note this is not a histogram. This does actually plot all the raw data points, but we could um, imagine that if you group them into these uh, categories, into these bins, where it's like maybe zero and then one to five and so forth and so on, you would see this graph really would be very similar to our data, which looks like this. Uh, where it would be heavily skewed to the left, where most of the plants are not very hairy. So for generation two, what we're going to do is take the seeds from generation one and uh, from the hairy plant subgroup and let them dry and then plant those little seedlings and um, take a look at the number of trichomes on that first little section of the stem and collect that data. So that's what we would have done in our class, but since we didn't get a chance to do that, let's take a look at last year's class data. So the number of plants that grew from the second generation was a lot smaller, only about 25 plants. And you can see the graph here. This is not a histogram, but you can already see if we were to group these plants into the bins or the smaller categories, um, you can see that this kind of resembles more like a bell-shaped curve. So we don't have most of the number of trichomes skewed heavily towards the left. Instead, you can already see that there's a change in the distribution of the phenotype, which is the number of trichomes. So what we need to do in order to answer our question, did evolution occur, is to compare the two generations of these fast plants. So what we did in showing you sort of a visual format is uh, we had these um, plants that followed a distribution curve and we selected four with this arrow, we selected for the hairiest plants. Um, for this particular experiment, this is this middle graph is showing generation two. You can already see that the that the distribution of this particular phenotype has already shifted a little bit to the right. And if we were to select again for the hairiest plants, the distribution for that third generation would skew a lot more heavily towards the right. So with the data from last year, you can see generation one is on the left. Uh, most of the distribution of trichomes is skewed to the left towards like zero or very few trichomes. And the second generation, since you already selected for the really hairy plants, you can see that it has shifted towards the right where the, you know, the top tip top of the curve is already over several trichomes. So this, these two graphs kind of represent uh, in our textbook, as we've seen, types of natural selection, this is directional selection. So the original population is represented by the dotted line, and the uh, new generation population after selection is represented by the solid line. So you can see that bell curve shifted towards the right, towards one direction. So let's compare the two generations, generation one and generation two. So generation one last year, uh, had mean number of trichomes. It was calculated to be 1.99. And for generation two, even though there are only 25 plants, their mean number of trichomes already at 25 plants was 6.28. So what is the mean? The mean is a measure of the central tendency of a set of data. It's represented by this equation. X bar means mean. Uh, sigma is the sum of, you're adding together all the different values of x, which are, in this case, our lab is the number of trichomes, divided by n, so the number of individuals um, or things that you're counting. And so for calculating the mean of this particular set of numbers, you add these five numbers together and divide by five, and the answer is 11.6. For our particular lab, you can graph the mean. Usually you uh, graph it as a bar graph. That's really helpful to see, and really easy to compare two different categories. So this is a graph showing for the 2019 data, the mean number of trichomes for generation one versus generation two. So generation one is in blue and generation two is in red. Now what you can see right away from this representation of the data is that the blue bar is a lot lower looking than the red bar. So from this graph alone, you might draw a conclusion saying, oh yes, the mean number of trichomes increased uh, from generation one to generation two. 
But is it true that there is a statistically significant difference between the two populations? Well, in order to answer this question, we can't just look at it visually. We actually have to calculate some statistics.